Welcome back to The Legal Brief, the show where we crush the various legal myths and misinformation surrounding various areas of the gun world. I'm your host, Adam Kraut, and today we're talking about ATF booting stabilizing braces out of the overall length measurement of a firearm. SB Tactical, the originator of the pistol stabilizing brace, set the bar for innovation and product development in the PDW pistol category. From the insanely popular SBM4 to the adjustable SBA3 and even kits for pump action firearms, SB Tactical braces are available for a wide variety of firearm platforms in fixed, adjustable, and side folding models. To get 15% off your legally transported and carried pistol braces, use the code TGC15 over at sb-tactical.com. At the end of June, ATF sent an unsolicited letter to an individual who previously had inquired about the proper way to measure the overall length of a pistol equipped with a stabilizing brace. That inquiry was over a year ago via email, to which ATF had already responded. In the letter, ATF stated that FTISB, which is the Firearms Technology Industry Services Branch, has previously determined that stabilizing braces may be assembled on firearms as accessories. In contrast to stocks on rifles or shotguns, stabilizing braces are merely accessories and not relevant to the classification of a pistol under the statutory definition. That is, a folding stock on a rifle or shotgun is included in the overall length measurements because the firearm must be designed or redesigned and intended to be fired from the shoulder to be so classified. The stock is therefore an essential element in the statutory definition. Okay, so before we go any further, what ATF is saying is that the stabilizing brace is not integral to determining whether a firearm is a pistol or not. As an example, prior to the invention of the stabilizing brace, AR pistols were equipped with smooth receiver extensions or buffer tubes. Adding a brace to one would not change its classification from a pistol to something else. Compare that to a stock, where adding a stock to an AR pistol would convert it into a rifle, and depending upon the barrel length, possibly making it a short barrel rifle. Now, because a stabilizing brace is an accessory and not relevant to its classification, ATF is taking the position that when measuring the overall length of a firearm, the stabilizing brace is not to be included. If you're dealing with a gun that has a solid receiver extension or buffer tube, the brace should be removed and the overall length should be measured from the end of the receiver extension or buffer tube to the muzzle or the end of the muzzle device if that's permanently attached. If the firearm has a stabilizing brace that folds, it must be measured in the folded position. As ATF states in its letter, makers also create an artificial overall length measurement by attaching a folding stabilizing brace. Such a measurement would be problematic because the firearm could avoid classification as an AOW, yet retain the concealability and remain fully functional. Measuring a folding or telescoping stabilizing brace would therefore undermine the comprehensive statutory and regulatory design of the GCA and NFA. The measurement of a folding or collapsible stabilizing brace in the overall length of a firearm creates an artificial overall length that would permit a maker to avoid classification as an NFA firearm without a viable design purpose or legal justification. I know some of you are asking, but Adam, but, 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 Adam. why does this matter? You just said that the brace has nothing to do with the classification of my pistol being a pistol. And if you're thinking that, you're right. But if you're one of the people who has put a vertical foregrip on their pistol and included the stabilizing brace in the overall length measurement to exceed 26 inches, you're about to be in for a bad time. You french fry when you pizza, you're gonna have a bad time. Side note, questions about putting vertical foregrips on AR pistols are still one of the top questions that we get here on TGC. For this to make sense, we need to take a trip down memory lane to talk about the definition of any other weapons or AOWs, which are controlled by the National Firearms Act or NFA. In the part pertinent to our discussion, the term AOW is defined to mean any weapon or device capable of being concealed on the person from which a shot can be discharged through the energy of an explosive. Such terms shall not include a pistol or revolver having a rifled bore. So, an AOW can be a weapon that's capable of being concealed on a person and from which a shot can be discharged through the energy of an explosive, and the term AOW specifically excludes a pistol with a rifled bore. We also need to take a quick peek at the definition of pistol, which is found in the regulations of the NFA. It's defined to mean a weapon originally designed, made, and intended to fire a projectile, bullet, from one or more barrels when held in one hand. ATF has stated that there's a presumption that a firearm 26 inches or less is capable of being concealed on a person. 
That's not to say that an overall length greater than 26 inches is a guarantee it falls outside of that category, especially if there's evidence introduced that the firearm was actually concealed on a person. ATF has also stated that by installing a vertical foregrip on a handgun, the handgun's no longer designed to be held and fired by the use of a single hand. Starting to see the problem? Essentially, if a person has a pistol where they measure the overall length, including the stabilizing brace, to ensure it was more than 26 inches, and then added that vertical foregrip, ATF is now contending that they may have manufactured an AOW. If the overall length of that firearm without the brace is 26 inches or less, it would be an AOW according to ATF. If the overall length without the brace was more than 26 inches, it would be classified as a firearm, which would be lawful to possess without having to go through the NFA process. Again, that last part is predicated on it not being concealed on a person. That doesn't mean all hope is lost for people who wish to put something on the front of their pistol that has an overall length of 26 inches or less. For example, ATF determined that the grip stop was not a vertical foregrip. As such, adding it to a handgun does not result in making an NFA firearm, unlike adding a vertical foregrip. Other options are available. So, what's the bottom line? If you have a pistol and you're not adding a vertical foregrip, this changes nothing for you. To properly measure your pistol, you start from the muzzle end and measure to the end of the receiver extension or buffer tube. If the firearm is equipped with a folding mechanism, it must be folded before you start to measure. Not surprisingly, if you put a vertical foregrip on a pistol which measures 26 inches or less, you have made an AOW, which requires an approved NFA Form 1 to lawfully make. If you attach an angled foregrip, like the grip stop, to one of those, it does not become an AOW. Firearms measuring over 26 inches with a vertical foregrip are generally not considered to be AOWs either. Hopefully, this puts a lot of your questions to rest. That's it for this episode. If you learned anything from the show, help us out, hit that like button, make sure you share it around with your friends. Don't forget to get subscribed to if you enjoyed the video, consider supporting us via the links down in the video description. And as always, thanks for watching. If you french fry when you should have pizza, you're gonna have a bad time. <laughs> yep, it's over, but don't worry, you can click on the video up top to watch last week's show, and the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.